Um, so, and, and clearly, there's a, from an educational outreach point of view, there, there, there must be quite a lot that you can actually do there as well. Well, th this is one of the truly exciting parts of this project, and it's something that, that I, I, I've sort of grown to really embrace, is, is the ability of um, a facility like this to promote science education in young people. Um, a, as a lot of um, Australians know, and it's not just Australians, it's a worldwide phenomena, there is a decrease in the amount of um, people, young people being educated in science and, um, and so what we have to do is find a way of reversing that trend and the best way to reverse that trend is to get, uh, is to encourage young people to be inspired and the best way for young people to be inspired is to see actual research. We don't do textbook stuff here, um, it, this is very hands on, this is discovery, everything we do is about discovery and everything we do is about finding new things about the universe. So this type of facility, we can have young people actually actively involved in the research. Um, because of the robotic nature of the telescope, it, we can have um, scheduling where we have young people can make their own observations. And with a bit of expertise, they can make discoveries of um, supernova, exploding stars or new asteroids and another exciting project that we've just started is a collaboration with um, Provence in the south of France where we have school children in the south of France who will be able to um, use the ZADCO telescope to do imaging of extrasolar planets which are planets beyond our solar system orbiting other stars and they can use our telescope to do images. Australian telescopes, uh, Australian students can also um, work with um, the French uh, school teachers and students and so there is this cultural um, intermingling and this cultural awareness um, between um, France and Australia. Even though we're, we're both Western countries there are still many uh, many differences at all levels and especially from an educational level too. The schooling system is different so this type of um, project is a way of providing joint inspiration to both groups of school students to get them involved in research and to get them engaged in another culture and language so it's uh, we're really excited about this right so so you're supporting cross-cultural fertilization I think yeah cross-cultural fertilization ideas education fantastic so um, obviously you've got quite a few things happening uh, in UWA and personally but what's What's your next project that you may be uh, working on? Um, I'm transient, so I, I, my, my specialty is transient, so I'll never know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and Mirthi, of course, you're, you're still going to be working on this for a while. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, I hope to, to work um, and to finish all this stuff. I mean, why not to have another project with another telescope linking with our network, but I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, and of course, the, the billion dollar question. Um, if you had to have a billion dollars, or a few bi billion dollars, <laughs> what would you do in terms of research at the very least? Yeah. <laughs> I think we, um, I, yeah, I, I think that we would definitely benefit from more people working um, on the research that we're doing. We, we are under-resourced both in equipment and especially people. So if we could have um, a project where we're exploring the transient universe, linking all these telescopes together and, and starting to answer fundamental questions about life on Earth, how life originated in the universe, um, the search for extrasolar planets, all, all this is, are the fundamental questions underpinning um, all, of, all of science. And so with that kind of funding, you can start asking fundamental questions where with a small amount of funding, we're often um, aren't able to fully address those questions. Yes, I agree. Uh, <laughs> I think we need more people and more also. This means uh, a lot of money for the salary of these people and a lot of equipment like a larger telescope, but with this the last late, latest technology like, so mm. we can make very fast moving telescope and with a 
great field of view, I don't know. And so, and linking all together with a big, big network and to have all this computer to make all the database we need to manage all this information and all this science. So yes, I think a few billions can be good. <laughs> Very useful indeed. Okay, now, um, if I had to say, what, what would you say uh, were the top three um, astrophysics type um, problems that we need to solve right now, regardless of billions? Would they involve any of the dark energies, the dark matter, the... Yeah, I, I think that's... Those kind of things? Uh, yeah, I, I think the unknown, uh, the question of what dark energy is, even if we don't even know if dark energy really exists, but the fact is that we've got um, an understanding of the way the universe, how the universe was in the past, the way it will be in the future, but we don't really know why that is the case. There's a lot of missing pieces, and one of those missing pieces is called dark energy, where supposedly 70% of the energy density of the universe is made up by something that we don't know what it is, we don't know the form of this energy, it's totally exotic and it, it's it's very ad hoc so there is a huge um, theoretical effort to understand what dark energy is and this is one of the unusual cases where um, observation is way ahead of theory there is no good theory that describes what dark energy is and then there's dark matter not to be confused with dark energy because they're very different things but it appears that a significant fraction of the matter of the gravitating matter, that's the stuff that attracts things through gravity, is is made up of something that we can't visually see optically. It, it, it does not um, absorb and transmit photons. It interacts only through gravity. That's called dark matter. Mm -hmm. So that is another huge mystery. Maybe these things are related, but it doesn't seem to be related. Or it's more likely, I think, better. <laughs> yeah. well, and the an exoplanets. Too. Exoplanets. Yeah, it's Search a very for good, it. good question, yeah. yeah. To, to know if there is another a planet like, like our Earth. planet. Yes. Yeah. Three. Well, it's, it's certainly a very exciting time to actually be in science, I think, right now. And certainly, um, up and coming scientists will no doubt have solved some of the problems if we haven't actually managed to do so in the next 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I would like to thank you both, uh, Professor David uh, Coward and uh, Dr. Mirti Laos Bores. Yes, thank you. And uh, hopefully, we'll actually catch you maybe in uh, December and uh, yes. some of the answers that you've actually given us. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. Very you. Much.